Can all this be true? The existence of purgatory is so certain that no Catholic has ever entertained a doubt of it. It was taught from the earliest days of the Church and was accepted with undoubting faith wherever the Gospel was preached. The doctrine is revealed in Holy Scripture and has been handed down by tradition, taught by the infallible Church and believed by the millions and millions of faithful of all times. Yet, as we have remarked, the ideas of many are vague and superficial on this most important subject. They are like a person who closes his eyes and walks deliberately over the edge of a yawning precipice. They would do well to remember that the best means of lessening our term in purgatory or of avoiding it altogether is to have clear ideas of it, to think well on it, and to adopt the means God offers for avoiding it. Not to think of it is fatal. It is nothing else than preparing for themselves a fearfully long and rigorous purgatory. The Polish Prince A Polish Prince who, for some political reason, had been exiled from his native country, bought a beautiful castle and property in France. Unfortunately, he had lost the fate of his childhood and was, at the time of our story, engaged in writing a book against God and the existence of a future life. Strolling one evening in his garden, he came on a poor woman, weeping bitterly. He questioned her as to the cause of her grief. Ah, Prince, she replied, I am the wife of Jean-Marie, your former steward, who died two days ago. He was a good husband to me and a faithful servant to your highness. His sickness was long, and I spent all our savings on the doctors, and now I have nothing left to get masses said for his soul. The prince, touched by her grief, said a few kind words, and, though professing to no longer believe in a future life, gave her some gold coins to have masses said for her husband's soul. Some time after, it was again evening, and the prince was in his study, working feverishly at his book. He heard a loud rap at the door and, without looking up, called out to the visitor to come in. The door slowly opened, and a man entered and stood facing the prince's writing table. On glancing up, what was not the prince's amazement to see Jean-Marie, his dead steward, looking at him with a sweet smile. Prince, he said, I come to thank you for the masses you enabled my wife to have said for my soul. Thanks to the saving blood of Christ, which was offered for me, I am now going to heaven, but God has allowed me to come and thank you for your generous alms. He then added impressively, Prince, there is a God, a future life, 
a heaven and a hell. Having said these words, he disappeared. The prince fell on his knees and poured forth a fervent credo. Saint Antonius and his friend Here is a narrative of a different kind but not less instructive. Saint Antonius, the illustrious Archbishop of Florence, relates that a pious gentleman and great friend of the Dominican convent in which the saint resided, died. Many masses and suffrages were offered for his soul. The saint was very much afflicted when, after the lapse of a long time, the soul of the poor gentleman appeared to him, suffering excruciating pains. Oh, my friend, exclaimed the archbishop, are you still in purgatory? You who led such a pious and devout life. Yes, and I shall remain there still for a long time, replied the poor sufferer. For when on earth I neglected to offer suffrages for the souls in purgatory, now God, by a just judgment, has applied the suffrages which have been offered for me to those souls for whom I should have prayed. But God too, in His justice, will give me all the merits of my good works when I enter heaven. But first of all, I have to expiate my grave neglect to regard to others. So true are the words of our Lord. By that measure with which you measure, it will be measured to you again. Remember you who read these lines, that the terrible fate of this pious gentleman will be the fate of all those who neglect to pray for and refuse to help the holy souls. How long do the souls remain in purgatory? The length of time souls are detained in purgatory depends on the number of their faults, on the malice and deliberation with which these have been committed, on the presence done or not done, the satisfaction made or not made for sins during life. Much, too, depends on the suffrages offered for them after death. What can be safely said is that the time souls spend in purgatory, as a rule, is very much longer than people commonly imagine. We will quote a few of the many instances which are recounted in the lives and revelations of the saints. Saint Louis Bertrand's father was an exemplary Christian, as we should naturally expect, being the father of so great a saint. He had even wished to become a Carthusian monk until he learned that it was not God's will for him. When he died, after a long year spent in the practice of every Christian virtue, his saintly son, fully aware of the rigors of God's justice, offered many masses and poured forth the most fervent supplications for the soul he so dearly loved. A vision of his father still in purgatory forced him to intensify 
a hundredfold his suffrages. He added most severe penances and long fasts to his masses and prayers. Yet, eight whole years passed before he obtained the release of his father. Saint Malachi's sister was detained in purgatory for a very long time, despite the masses, prayers, and heroic mortifications the saint offered for her. It was related to a holy nun in Famfluna who succeeded in releasing many Carmelite nuns from purgatory that most of this had spent there terms of from 30 to 60 years. Carmelite nuns in purgatory were 40, 50, and 60 years. What will it be for those living midst the temptations of the world and with all their hundreds of witnesses? Saint Vincent Ferrer after the death of his sister, prayed with incredible fervor for her soul and offered many masses for her release. She appeared to him at length and told him that, had it not been for his powerful intercession with God, she should have remained an interminable time in purgatory. In the Dominican order is the rule to pray for the Master Generals by name on their anniversaries. Many of these have been dead several hundred years. They were men especially eminent for piety and learning. This rule would not be approved by the Church were it not necessary and prudent. We do not mean to imply that all souls are detained equally long periods in the expiatory fires. Many have committed lesser faults and have done more penance. Therefore, their punishment will be much less severe. Still, the instances we have quoted are very much to the point for if these souls who enjoyed the intimacy, who saw the example and shared in the intercession of great saints during their lives, and who, after death, were aided by their most efficacious suffrages, yet were detained for such a length of time in purgatory, what may not happen to us who enjoy none of these wonderful privileges.